Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. And what a wonderful morning this is. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Holland, welcome to Amsterdam, and welcome to Great Experience 2015. And as Michael before, I couldn't be more excited. 267 people from 50 countries. Isn't that amazing? And I'm so happy to be here for the third consecutive time doing the morning keynote at Great Experience. One guy, though, that is not so happy is Mike. My best buddy. I wonder what that is. Yeah, that's right. He visited one of your branches yesterday, and he visited, and he left unserved. And if you are one of those, you know, typical service provider that we meet somewhere in the world, you never knew that he came. You never know why he came in the first place. You don't know how long he waited, and for sure, you don't know that had he left unserved. So today my ambition is to look at some service situations. What is going on? What is happening and what are the consequences of that? And also what you can do about it. So what I will talk about today is less about technology, more about humans, human emotions, and the action we take. First, a question to you guys. Do you know how much of your time, your lifetime that you spend waiting in line? Any idea? 15? Was that? 50% 50 50 of your life waiting. Where do you live? <laughs> I don't want to go there. My God, 50%. Well, it's a good guess. But it's a little bit too much. Re according to a recent British study, the Brits, Terry, Joe, spend six months of your life waiting in queues. It's amazing, isn't it? Six months. An article in New York Times last year stated that the Americans spend 37 billion hours in line. 37 billion hours. That is 18 billion baseball games, guys. It's 800 million round-the-world trips with a Boeing 747. And if Boeing did their job well, you could take that Boeing and fly to Saturn 23,216 times. One-way trip. We know it's impossible, by the way. Don't we want something different? We don't like waiting. We don't like bad service. We are all wanting something different. And in this day and age, we go about our life in a different way. We are empowered by the phone, which should be in my left-hand pocket, but it wasn't. It was here. By this device. We have information ready, available at our hand. We can communicate to anyone at any point in time. We want to be served, and we want to be served now. We're the generation of now. And as Michael said, this is what we try to fix. We are very proud to have an equivalent of almost a quarter of the world's population passing through one of our systems every year. That is 1.8 billion people equivalent. And if we took the time that we know that we can help you customers and clients save you working with us, that is 51,370 years. And just put the moderate value of your time per hour, that is a staggering 26 billion US dollars saving every year. And that's just schematic. So imagine the waste we have in the world standing in line and waiting and getting bad service. So what I'm so happy to do here today is to work with you guys, because I know that you want to do something about this. You are the people that want to get rid of bad service, get rid of waiting and seeing 
bad waiting and bad experience as your arch enemies. You want to give your customers, patients, citizens, a different feeling. Not a feeling of wasting time, but a feeling of going somewhere. We want to go. We don't want to wait. We want to go places. But yet, we're waiting. It's Ali's story this morning. So our brand promise to you is that we want to help you keep the world in go. And this is what this is about. So let's explore some of the things here. We will have Thomas talking from Forrester in a bit about customer experience. And it couldn't be more important to get this right. In this day and age, to get the engagement points right with your client, with your patients and citizens, nothing could be more important. So exploring some of these service situations is important. And we as a company, we're a tech company. You will see that when you go to visit the exhibition hall. We understand the technology on its own is basically useless if it's not put in place in the right way. This is why we have a stronger industry focus, Michael. We want to understand sectors. We want to understand clients better in order to deliver the best possible solution. Because if we understand what goes on during the journeys, we can also deliver better tech solutions. So exploring some of these service situations, I will use a concept developed by a very famous person, Daniel Kahneman. Hands up who knows who Daniel Kahneman is. He's not so very famous. <laughs> uh, but he has a Nobel Prize to prove for it. He's written a book, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. Someone might have read that. But he got the Nobel Prize uh, Award 2002 for his work in behavioral economics. I will use this theory of his called the peak and rule. And I'll explain what it is. And we will test some of the service situation against this. We are all different. That's the left-hand side. We are all different. We have different motivations, different filters, different upbringings, things. We look at life in a bit different way. And especially here, we also have cultural filters that we look through our lives through. So that is in the left-hand side. Then we experience something. We go to the hospital. We go to one of your stores, like Mike did. And we experience something. And once we experience that, we vet that against the expectation we had. And when we have experienced something, we become reflective. What really happened? And the peak end rule says that during that journey, what matters most are the low end of the journey, the very high end, more importantly, how it's ended. Think about the vacation. You go to Greece, it's a perfect vacation, it's one week, the kids are happy, it's beautiful beaches, great food, the sun is shining, you're going home, you lose your wallet. That is the vacation you will always remember. So, well, you remember we went to Greece, and I lost my wallet. That is the peak and rule. So te let's test that to some situations. Apple, great, great, great experience. High people density, passionate people, great inspirational stores, and they have geniuses in their stores. This is what a sales rep is called. Have any one of you guys met a genius? One, two, three, four, five. Have you ever booked a time with a genius? Meet my other friend, James, from San Francisco. He had booked a time with a genius. His expectation was to be met by a genius. Instead, he ended up in an unmanaged queue at the store. And he became extremely reflective to the degree that he took up his phone, shot the picture of the queue, and tweeted it out. His expectation was to be met by a genius at a certain point in time, to have a great experience. When experienced the low end, he became reflected and tweeted. Going to a hospital, we don't want to do that, really. But if we do, we want to be treated fairly, keep our privacy, don't wait, and meet with some people that hopefully know what they're doing. Meet my third friend, Leslie from Ontario. She had booked a meeting to do, I think it was a flu shot. 
so had four other people at the same time. So she had to wait for 90 minutes. And being an accountant, and I know that Henning is somewhere out here, our CFO, you know, time is money. So I want you to pay for one and a half hour of my time because you made me wait. This became viral to the degree that I found it in my LinkedIn flow in Sweden. National magazines, regional magazines, and local magazines. At Cumatic, we believe that customers that are on the way to you or are in the process need always to be informed and empowered. You will see some of the solutions in the exhibition hall, how we do that. As Michael showed on the chart here, we have so many banks here, and we're so happy to have you here, and we're so happy to work with you guys. And we all know that you have challenges in you know, getting your business right, the omnichannel challenges, mobility, all of these things. You all work in this bank of the future products, trying to figure out the future of the branch. And this one here is that, you know, step inside, where engaging members with warm hospitality greets you. Your eyes are drawn to the flagship video that sets progressive tone designed to educate about the new way of banking. Steel bridge beams span the length of the interior, creating an open and modern space that signals this is not banking as usual. What about the bank of today? Dr. Andrew Fisher goes to NetWest in the UK. Five people in the bank side. The Manchester brand, big queue, only one person serving, hashtag fail. Wouldn't it be good that the people working behind had some proactive alerts so that actually people out there now? Benjamin Lord, I won't even mention what he says in his tweet. Long holiday, my local bank branches has 47 people in queue. Only two out of seven tellers open. They should know after holiday that they need to have more people serving. So serving based on data and rostering would be a pretty good idea. Samir, he hates bank branches. They have no respect for people's time, 25 minutes at the front of the queue waiting to collect new credit card. Pretty good idea, and we all know that in Kematic, never mix long with short transaction time. That's sort of customer flow basic number one. Came to the bank before lunchtime rush, so I wouldn't have to queue. Looks like everyone did the same. <laughs> we tried to figure this out on our own, trying to be smart, but you cannot beat people going places. So why don't do like Apple do, offer an appointment booking to even out the people flow? Some time ago, I went to, Veri to New York, and I went into this beautiful Verizon store in Manhattan. I had an idea, and my expectation was to go in there and experience tech stuff, because I love technology. It took five seconds, and I had two guys in front of me hammering with me with tablets, asking me questions. I very politely said, no, I just want to experience your store. Please leave me alone, you know, and I will find my own way. I went to the next booth, and then came the third person. Hi, my name is Bob. How can I help you? You can't. I just want to be left alone and figure it out. Well, you know, some people are confused, and I, you know, I get a lot of, no, please, leave me alone. The third station, the fourth guy came, and I did as Mike, my buddy, I left unserved. So the process they had here didn't cater for my need to just experience the store. It was catering to give my mobile phone number so they can know if I was a Verizon customer or not. That is not a great experience. Then we are all different. You cannot have one process for everyone. This is the opposite problem. Again, the guy becoming reflective. Workers just standing around while eight people are waiting. He might be doing something critical, this guy here. But as a customer, we don't see that. And we reflect and see this, that he should serve me instead of having me wait. So trying to sum this up, in this day and age, it's very bad to not cater for all of the different things that happens in your, your uh, environment, in your organization. And we know it's a challenge. We know that this isn't easy. 
and there are so many things you had to figure out. We try to look at some of the things that we think we can help you with, trying to avoid that this becomes a bad experience, that we're not only sharing with five people and staying at the dinner table, but that actually becomes a viral. So the way we look at this is to, when something happens in real time, you should do something about it. If someone are on their way to leave an appointment, you should know about that so you can re-engage them. So looking at real-time information, and as Michael said, the mobile workforce, what kind of real-time tools can we provide to your staff, your team, in order to be empowered to do a better job serving your customers? Some of the things you will see downstairs in the exhibition, we also have in the end of the day, launching two new products on this theme. So that was hospital, retail, banks. What about government? Empowered citizens amp up the pressure. DMV. Now there's a shill going down the spine from you guys in the US. Department of Motor Vehicles. I know that Jeff, where are you? There you are, Jeff, our new managing director of the US. For the people that doesn't know the DMV, what would you say a typical answer would be to say, what's the perception of DMV in the US, Jeff? They hate it. They hate it. Short and snappy. They Why? Because you wait long lines, there's no customer experience, and you're just a number in the line. Okay. Pretty gloomy. This is why I selected this you know, picture, which is quite gloomy. So this is not only the age of the customer, this is the age of the citizen. And we had this roundtable discussion yesterday, and I was so impressed by you guys from, from Dubai, talking about the smart city initiatives, how the government is really pushing for great service, how they measure if they live up to their promises or not, and even legislating in order to provide citizens great experiences. But the DMV obviously is not one of those organizations, or are they? Maybe I have to move closer now. I have some glitches here with my... Ah, here we go. Thank you. Again. I mean, this is, not, this is very easy to find, guys. Just do hashtag fail and look to DMV, and you will get a bunch of these things. What I found utterly interesting, though, was not the DMV. They think DMV is so bad, so when they go into a Comcast Xfinity store, they say, rival the DMV in their awfulness. <laughs> so you even have the DMV as the, you know, over here to, to measure up against something else. And X X Xfinity is, I think, quite a big investment they do in their stores. So this is what we expect. So how do we at Cumatic see the journey is being done instead. Let's take a look at this video. Say hello to the experience economy and to the world of the ever-connected customer, constantly on the move. A customer that wants immediate access to personalized service and ease of communication. With every single interaction, you have the opportunity to make an impact. Cumatic empowers you to connect the engagement points and create a seamless customer journey. And even though their journey changes, you'll be with them every step of the way. Cumatic uses cutting-edge technology, such as integrated concierge tablets, self-service points, mobile apps, and localization to make your customer's journey as smooth as possible. And by bridging the virtual and physical worlds, Cumatic enables you to deliver personalized communication and positive experiences. We make sure that your customers know you value their time making them feel like an individual. A 
Our business intelligence tools helps you to visualize and appraise your customer journey data, as well as to continually improve it. The result? A consistent brand experience, loyal customers, and a stronger market position. This is our vision of a journey, and this is, of course, is in a retail context, but it's so easy to translate that into a, a citizen journey going to a government agency or a patient going to a hospital or clinic. The new New York DMV. Fast, easy, convenient. Save time. Go online. Yes, you can actually do something about this. And one of our clients that we're so proud to work with is the New York DMV, who has launched a very comprehensive program to improve customer service for the citizens of New York. And we are very proud to be an integral part of that, being able to allow customers to book online, to make appointments, to use their mobile phones on their way to the DMV, to make sure that they are informed all the time, that they can remotely check in before they arrive, and when they do that, the staff will know that they're on their way. So what happens now if you take the Daniel Kahneman theory, the peak and rule? What will happen if you do it right? Customers also share good stories. So here is one of the many Everything was done there, a title change, new plates, new registration in five minutes flat. I walked out uncontrollably smiling. I've asked people how you do that. Jeff was almost, you know, you almost said, you know, have an American drink, a big cup of coffee, then maybe he will be uncontrollably smiling. This guy, this Manhattan office, they get like a 4.8 scale uh, or vote on Yelp. I never thought I'd be writing a review for the DMV, let alone give it five stars, but my experience here was so fantastic that I had to rate it on, rate it on Yelp. And then it just goes on a long, long mail or re review. What I find most uh, you know, amazing is that the New York DMV engage in this dialogue in social media. So when someone is raving, they engage and thank them online. So this is also something that you can achieve by, in this way, disrupting an expectation. Everyone hates the DMV, Jeff, but New Yorkers love them. So doing it right can also have dramatically uh, other effects. So to sum up a little bit what we do at Cumatic, what we have the ambition to do, regardless of what sector you operate, is to help you match the needs of customers or patients or citizens coming to your location, to make sure that they are met with the best possible staff, having the tools in the hands of the staff, empowering them to do a great job. We help clients to personalize the journey by identifying who they are earlier in the stage, being able to get them into the journey in a more efficient way from online into the physical world. By measuring what goes on throughout the journey, and you will also see some examples of that in the exhibition, really try to figure out what goes on with data and statistical point. And this is something we have talked about, Peter, you know, in regard to Ipsos. How can we improve this even further? Getting more data points in order to deliver better uh, information so you can take decisions on. And it's about reducing not only customer effort, but staff effort. If you ever go into a retail store with a lot of people waiting, just look at the faces of the people serving them. That tells it all. So, summing up, we are all different. One size doesn't fit. That was the Verizon case. You have to see that we are all different and you have to cater uh, for different journeys. And you also have to train your staff. We talked about that yesterday as well. The soft skill of staff. It's not easy to get, but you have to have great people serving your customers. 
get all of the touch points right. If you do well up until the last moment and that crumbles, this is what we will remember as customers. Empower your staff. Don't give your customers an upper hand. We know so much today, and my brother-in-law, he's a medical doctor, and you know, his patient, he tells me, they know more about drugs and medicine than he does. So he has to read up, because they are armed with information. They draw the wrong conclusions, but they are armed with information. And what matters most are the low, end, and high points, but more importantly, how it's ended. I think that was it. No, there's one more thing. Taking this now, we have created something we call Cumatic Lab. As Michael said, we want to explore new areas. We want to be out there in the front, really looking at new things. I met with the Vice President of IKEA in, in Berlin some months ago, and he showed a survey they had done asking their customers, of, when do you use your phone? It was a lot of questions, but this was one of them. 83% of IKEA customers said, when I'm waiting. The second one was 24%. And think about it when you use your phone, while you're waiting. Being the business we are, we found that quite intriguing. Other services you know, are asking us, what do you do with your phone? Yeah, we do YouTube and we do these micro moments and, and really, you know, playing. And playing, gaming, using the phone for game, 58% according to this study by Mobile Behavior Report. So then we sat down, what does this mean? What should we do here? We have people waiting, we have a mobile strategy, we're investing in mobility, and people are gaming. And then, with our partner Sticky Beat, we said, let's try to do something that takes care of this. So let's look at this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever combined gaming and virtual line experience. It's a fully functional app. You can download it on uh, Google Play or my uh, app store from Apple. You can play it. You can practice it. It's a fully functional game. And why do we do this? And it's also integrated to Orchestra, our enterprise platform, Q management system. So why do we do this? Well, again, it's a lab product. We want to explore things. As Michael said, we want to listen to you, talk to you, get your feedback on these things. But this is an opportunity to exploit the large gaming industry in the world, to engage your customers, to build brand loyalty, and Sticky Beat knows a lot about that. I work with great clients of how gamification and games can build brand loyalty. And more importantly, reduce the perceived wait time. Because we all know, working with Kematic and our partner community, when you do something with your time, the perceived waiting time goes down, and the perceived waiting time matters more than the actual waiting time. So it's a fully functional gaming experience. It can be played offline, and there's a queue engine simulator. So you can show this for your clients. This is a lab product. What do you think about it? And we want to talk to you during these two days about this idea. Important note, though, we also built in a competition in this. There is a code that you can give when you start the game, and you can play against each other here at the Great Experience event. 
that code will be kept a well-kept secret until 5 today. But download it and play it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was it. We are now going to have three more great keynote speakers. We have Joe Moran from Marks and Spencers. We have Thomas Houston from Forrester. And we have Peter van der Werf from ING. I've been delighted to have you here. Please engage with us, talk to us, and go down to the exhibition where you will be able to see the technology that keeps the world in go. Thank you very much. <laughs>